Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Multivariable system, detuning multivariable, systematic detuning. of multivariable systems, decentralized system that means yeah that means what it means. Okay. Well, so let us say I got a 2 by 2 system, let us take an example and man we have drawn this so many times, I am tired drawing it again and again and again. Okay. So, if I have a multivariable system And I am trying to control this guy using a controller. This is my decentralized G C 1, and I am trying to control this guy using another controller. This is G C 2, and of course, effect on 1 of 1. This is U 1, this is Y 1, this is U 2, this is Y 2 effect on 2 of 1, effect on 1 of 2, effect on 2 of 1 yeah. and this is y 1 set point and this is y 2 set point of course, plus minus negative feedback plus minus yeah, okay. uh, let us say this is plus 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 plus. Okay. If I have this kind of a system then let us just do a mathematical, let us just develop the equations of the relationship between y 1 s p and y 1 y 2 and y 2 s p and y 1 y 2. Uh, if I well, how do we do it? Well, let us let, let, let's, let's, let's do it here, let us use this place, this space to do it. Okay. Then, what I have is y 1 is equal to g 1 1 u 1 plus g 1 2 u 2 and y 2 is equal to g 2 1 u 1 plus g 2 2 u 2 in matrix form I can write y 1 y 2 is equal to g 1 1 g 1 2 g 2 1 g 2 2 u 1 u 2. This is a representation of the same equation where where I am saying y vector is equal to g p process transfer function times u vector matrix of process transfer function. Okay. Now, that we have done this what is u equal to you will find that u 1 is actually equal to g c 1 times e 1 that is that is actually decentralized control in, in that input 1 is moved based only on E 1 you do not care about what is happening to error 2 and U 2 is moved based only on error 2 independent of what is happening to error 1 which is basically in matrix form saying U, U 1 U 2 is equal to g c 1 g c 2 0 0 e 1 e 2 and e 1 e 2 is actually y 1 set point 
minus y 1 and this is actually y 2 set point minus y 2. So, if I look at this equation let me call this the controller matrix G C and that is I, I repeat again the fact that the off diagonal terms in my controller matrix are 0 implies I am doing decentralized control. Okay. So, now what I am saying is that this is equivalent to u vector being equal to G C matrix which is a decentralized matrix times y set point minus y no this vector. So, well I substitute for u what I have derived here and if I substitute for u what I have derived here may be we should do it on the next page insert new page. So, what I had was y is equal to G p matrix times u and what I had was u is equal to G c matrix times y set point minus y vectors. When I substitute for u what I will get is y is equal to G p G c and please note here that the order of matrix multiplication is important because matrix multiplication is not commutative. Okay, times y set point minus y. Yeah, and if I take the y term to the left hand side, what I'll get is identity matrix plus G P G C matrices. This is also a matrix times y is equal to G P G C matrix times y set point and therefore, what I will get is y is equal to identity matrix plus G p G c inverse times G p G c of course, matrix multiplication times y. Remember for CISO systems what we had do you see the analogy for CISO systems what we had was y over y set point was actually g p g c the individual transfer functions divided by 1 plus g p g c and so what you actually have is y is equal to 1 plus g p g c inverse times g p g c times y set point. Do you see the analogy this is for a CISO system this is the equation for a multivariable system, but it is the analogy with, with the CISO system is pretty pretty clear. Okay. Now, when I am inverting this matrix, so now let me say my multivariable system is y is equal to some matrix G closed some matrix of transfer functions times y set point and this matrix of transfer functions g closed loop is actually equal to i plus g p g c inverse times g p this is what I get. Now, let us look at this matrix which I am inverting g p g c would ok. So, let us say I have a 2 by 2 system if I have a 2 by 2 system when let, let, let us say I got i plus g p g c. So, let us say a 2 by 2 system for a 2 by 2 systems i plus g p g c would be what? The inverse matrix for that 2 by 2 system that we have would be a 2 by 2 inverse matrix and this inverse matrix will have 4 terms 1, 2, 3, 4 and then of course, there will be this inverse matrix times g p g c. Okay. This inverse matrix will have as the denominator in the denominator it will have a term 
which is common to all the when you invert matrices what do you do you calculate the cofactors and divide by the determinant of the matrix right. So, what I have is determinant of this matrix I plus G P G C this determinant is there in the denominator of all the terms. So, there will be something in the numerator and then there will be the determinant you will be dividing by the determinant yeah there will be some numerator you can do the algebra, but the, but the point is that the determinant will come in the denominator and when you execute the multiplication of this matrix with, with this the determinant will remain in the denominator. So, the ultimate matrix that you will get which has 4 terms will still have the determinant. So, G closed loop will have the determinant in the denominator of all the 4 terms which relate which relate y a, the, the, the response of y to a change in y set point. Okay. So, therefore, so therefore, this guy the determinant this determinant occurs in all these transfer functions in the first transfer function in the sec you know in, 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 in all the 4 transfer functions relating y 1 y 2 to y 1 set point y 2 set point. Therefore, this determinant actually determines the stability of the closed loop multivariable system, because when I change the controller tuning the determinant changes. Therefore, the denominator changes and therefore, the roots of the denominator change and as the roots of and this denominator this determinant is common to all the 4 transfer functions 1, 2, 3, 4 right. So, it is so, so, so the closed loop multivariable characteristic equation is determinant of I plus G P G C is equal to 0. Okay. Now, let us let us talk about multivariable tuning how do we do seesaw tuning what is the basis of seesaw tuning seesaw tuning is what you take you take g open loop divided by 1 plus g open loop define this as g closed loop and then what you do is 20 log on base 10 of g closed loop you define this as l c l or l closed loop and then what you basically do is adjust k c such that l c l max is equal to 2 dB that is what we do right. Okay. Now, if I take a MIMO system uh, before I go to the MIMO system before I go to the multivariable system please note that by analogy this G C L is nothing but closed loop characteristic equation minus 1 plus closed loop characteristic equation. See the closed loop characteristic equation is 1 plus G open loop is equal to 0. 0 minus 1 plus closed loop characteristic equation divided by closed loop characteristic equation or LHS left hand side of closed loop characteristic equation. Okay. You can see that the log modulus whose hump I am trying to make sure does not is 2 decibels that log modulus is coming from closed loop characteristic equation left hand side of the closed loop characteristic equation minus 1 that is the numerator and and the denominator is the left hand side of the closed loop characteristic equation. Okay. Now, I by analogy I define for a MIMO or a multivariable system I have closed loop characteristic equation is what basically determinant of 
i plus g p g c this is the closed loop characteristic equation right equal to 0. Therefore, by analogy I defined for a multivariable system g closed loop for my multivariable system purely by analogy as minus 1 plus determinant of i plus g p g c divided by determinant of i plus g p g c. If the numerator I called I call the numerator as w then this is actually where w by definition is minus 1 plus determinant of i plus g p g c. All right, so what shall we do now? Okay, so this is my closed loop multivariable analog of GCL, CSO GCL. Okay, therefore LCL multivariable by analogy is twenty log on base ten of GCL multivariable, and now what I must do is choose my tuning parameters for the decentralized controllers in a manner such that L C L multivariable max is approximately equal to number of loops times 2 d b, because each loop yeah. So, number of loops. So, if, if it is a 2 by 2 system I will I'll, I'll, I'll tune my I'll tune my multivariable system. So, that I get an L C L m v multivariable max of 4 d b if it is 3 loops 6 d b 4 loops 8 d b. Okay. Now, let us come to tune such that tune uh, controllers such that this criteria is satisfied this criteria right here that is what I want to do. Okay, insert a new slide. So, here is the systematic procedure procedure tuning procedure. Okay, Let us say I have got a 2 by example tuning procedure and as an example I take a 2 by 2 system. So, I have got two controllers which we have been looking at okay. obtain K C for example, Ziegler Nichols for the first controller reset time tau i Ziegler Nichols for the first controller. You also obtain the gain Ziegler Nichols for the second controller and the tau I the reset time Ziegler Nichols for the second controller. Okay. This I can I can obtain using CSO techniques, these are the individual tuning parameters. Now, the question is I want to detune both the loops equally. So, what do I do? I choose a detuning factor. Detuning factor f and what Leibn recommends is you can detune either you can keep the tau i the same and detune only the controller gains and that is what I like to do other people detune everything. Okay. So, if you and f is greater than 1 that is the detuning factor. So, what you then do is adjust f oh, just a second what you then do is detune 
k c the controller gain you know set set k c 1 is equal to k c z n whatever you had calculated earlier divided by f and k c 2 is equal to k c 2 z n divided by f. So, what I am doing is I am detuning both the tuning parameters both the tuning this guy and this guy from their respective individual Ziegler Nichols tuning parameters by a factor of f all right. So, once I have detuned then I can calculate because now I know my tuning parameters I calculate L C L multivariable max adjust f adjust the due tuning factor such that L C L multivariable max is equal to for a 2 by 2 system it is actually 4 dB. So, you keep adjusting the you keep adjust you, you adjust the control respect the controller gains detune the controller gains by a factor f such that such that you get a maximum closed loop multivariable log modulus of 4 dB for a 2 by 2 system 6 dB for a 3 by 3 system and so on so forth. So, this is the multivariable uh, decentralized systematic procedure for detuning individual controllers in a interacting multivariable system. It is to derive this that we went through all the trouble and all the theory etcetera 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 all right. So, that is that now last but not least I want to until now well until now what we have what we have done is you know if I have a 2 by 2 system I am assuming u 1 is controlling y 1 u 2 is controlling y 2. A more fundamental question is should u 1 control y 1 or should u 1 control y 2 and u 2 control y 1 this is the pairing question what should I pair u 1 y 1 u 1 y 2 u 2 or y 1 u 2 y 2 u 1 this is the pairing question until now I have been assuming the pairing is fixed, okay. but now the question is in a multivariable system you also have the choice to choose the pairing how should I pair. So, there are interaction metrics that are used quite commonly to figure out which pairing gives us favorable interaction you see if you if you remember multivariable systems the off diagonal terms g 2 1 and g 1 2 and when you are trying to control both y 1 and y 2 they introduce an additional feedback path. And now if by adjusting my pairing the g 1 1 and g 1 2 the, the off diagonal terms can give too much interaction and for a pairing that has not been that has been chosen appropriately that interaction can be minimized or mitigated. So, pairing can be used in a manner to make sure that the off diagonal interaction terms are as good as possible so to speak. At the very least we need techniques to figure out where the off diagonal terms the interaction is so bad uh, that that particular pairing gives us such a bad interaction that you know it, 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 it really makes control difficult. So, how do we or what metrics do we use to basically reject bad pairings bad pairings that le that lead to interaction terms that are very you know uh, that 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 are well what should i say i am struggling for a word but maybe not good so we want to characterize interaction characterize the severity of multivariable interaction and based on that those metrics we should be able to figure out okay these pairings the interaction is bad these pairings the interaction is not so bad so these pairings are worth considering those pairings are worth throwing out the window okay 
So, for example, if you have a 2 by 2 system, you got 2 possible pairings, right. What are the 2 pairings? Y1 U1, Y2 U2, and the other pairing is Y2, oh no, sorry, Y1 U2, Y2 U1. Let us say I got a 3 by 3 system. Now, I have got how many pairings? I think 6 pairings. Let us see. So, y 1 u 1, y 2 u 2, y 3 u 3 that is 1. Then the next one can be I can flip these guys, I can flip the first 2 guys. So, what I will have is y 1 u 2, y 2 no y 2 u 1 and then I keep the other guy fixed y 3 u 3 ok that is number 2. Then I could have y 1 u 3 y 2 u 2 and then I could have y 3 u 1 ok. Then I could also have you know y 1 oh man this is getting confusing then I could also have ok let me flip these two y 1 u 1 y 2 u 3 y 3 u 2. So, 1 2 3 4 y 1 u 2 y 2 u 3 y 3 u 1 y 1 u 3 y 2 u 1 y 3 ah, so these are the six possible combinations pairings <laughs> couple pairings that are possible input output pairings <laughs> boy girl or uh, input output pairings that are possible. Which one to implement <coughs> that is the question which one to implement should I implement this 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 which one gives me favorable multivariable interaction where the off diagonal terms are not as severe where the interaction multivariable interaction is not as severe. If the multivariable interaction is not as severe, the need for detuning will not be as severe and I will get better control right. It is like matching compatibility in couples yeah ok. Anyway, so that is the question that we are trying to address and for that there are two indices, two metrics that are very commonly used Niederlinsky index. Niederlinsky index and the other one is relative gain array and what I will do now and finish off is the Niederlinsky index. So, relative gain array Niederlinsky index is best understood if I use a 2 by 2 example and these are both steady state metrics extendable to dynamics where you put in transfer functions, but let us just look at the steady state gain. So, let us say I have got a I have got a system and I am looking at only the steady state relationship. So, if I make a change in u 1 there is a transient in y 1, but ultimately y 1 ends up changing by so much the steady state change in y 1. I make a change in u 1 what is the steady state change in y 2? I make a change in u 2 what is the steady state change in y 2? What is the steady state change in y 1? So, that steady state change is essentially the gain given by the gain let us say I have got k 1 1 k 2 1 k 1 2. Okay. So, let us say I am pairing 1 with 1 2 with 2 ok. So, 1 is paired with 1 I am so sorry ok this goes like this and this goes like this. So, what I am doing is I am pairing y 1 with u 1 and I am pairing y 2 with 
u2 and let us say I do not have a control system, but let us say I am an operator. If I am an operator and I am told look boss you have to maintain y1 and y2 at set points okay. all right. As an operator what do I do? I look at y1 and I see well it is not at set point I may keep adjusting u1 until it goes to set point. Once u y1 has gone to set point then I look at y2 and then I see oh well y2 is not at set point then I keep adjusting u2 until y2 is set point. But because I make a change in u2 the interaction term the cross term causes y1 to deviate from set point. So, I keep adjusting u1 until y1 is brought to set point. Once I have done that because u1 has changed I keep a y2 would have deviated. So, I keep adjusting u2 to bring y2 I keep doing it again and again and again and again hopefully if I have done it sufficient number of times y1 and y2 will get close enough if not exactly to their set point. So, that is the basic thinking that I will apply to, to derive Niederlinsky index. So, let us say everything is at set point. So, set point is 0. So, y 1 is at 0, y 2 is at 0, u 1 is at 0, u 2 is at 0. Everything is at set point as a, is at steady state. I am where I want to be. Now, let us say a disturbance comes in and let us say the magnitude of this disturbance is 1 and everything is getting added up. Because the disturbance came in now y 1 has gone to 1. If y 1 has gone to 1 what should I do to u 1 so that this signal becomes minus 1 then 1 minus 1 will bring this to 0 yes or no. So, so to, to repeat a disturb I was at steady state a disturbance came caused y 1 to deviate I as an operator see that oh y 1 has deviated. So, then what I do is I make u 1 minus 1 by k 1 1. If I have made u 1 minus 1 by k 1 1 and I wait long enough for the transients to pan out what I will find is u 1 has been made minus 1 1 by k 1 1 and therefore, this signal is minus 1 and now minus 1 plus 1 will will bring y 1 back to 0. However, when I have changed u 1 this signal becomes k 2 1 by k 1 1 negative sign and therefore, y 2 goes to minus k 2 1 by k 1 1 in order to then I say oh y 2 has deviated y 1 is at set point y 2 has deviated what should I do to u 2 in order to bring y 2 to set point. Well, if I change u 2 to minus k 2 1 by k 1 1 k 2 2 then this signal after multiplication by k 2 2 will become minus k 2 1 by k 1 1 plus. So, this will become plus and once this has become plus these two terms cancel out because these two terms cancel out y 2 goes back to 0. even as y 2 has gone back to 0 now u 2 has changed and because u 2 has changed this term will become k 1 2 k 2 1 divided by k 1 1 k 2 2 yeah. and therefore, now y 1 will go to plus k 1 1 k 2 1 divided by k 1 1 k 2 2. So, now I have brought y 2 to set point, but y 1 has deviated in order to bring y 1 I will again make a change that change will again affect y 2 and then once y 2 is affected I will again make a change to u 2 and that change will again make a change to y 1. So, you see 
if I keep doing this again and again and again after one circle, what I find is that if I look at u 1 after disturbance gave in, the first value that I gave it was minus 1 by k 1 1 and then y 1 deviated after I had done adjustments to u 2 by k 1 1 k 2 1 k 1 1 k 2 2 in order to bring this to 0. I will have to make a change of minus 1 by k 1 1 times whatever was the deviation k 1 1 k 2 1 k 1 1 k 2 2 yeah. and then if I do it again what I will get is k 1 2. k 2 2 whole square plus and so on so forth. So, basically what I am saying is u 1 would change by an infinite series if I keep it doing again and again and again it will change by 1 k 1 2 k 2 1 divided by k 1 1 k 2 2 plus k 1 2 k 2 1 divided by k 1 1 k 2 2 whole square plus and so on so forth this will be the infinite series. Okay. So, u 1 has to change by this guy 1 plus k 1 2 k 2 1 divided by k 1 1 k 2 2 plus and k 1 2 k 2 2 divided by k 1 1 k 2 2 whole square plus and so on so forth an infinite series. This infinite series will converge to a finite value if and only if k 1 2 k 2 1 series converges. for converges to a finite value converges to a finite value for this multiplication factor being less than 1. On the other hand if this multiplication factor is greater than 1 series diverges to infinity for this guy yes or no all right therefore if this condition is satisfied guaranteed the interaction is so bad that the if I am trying to control both y 1 and y 2 at set point if I am trying to maintain both y 1 and y 2 at set point guaranteed the inputs will blow up the input inputs will blow up to infinity ok u 1 will blow up to infinity u 2 will blow to infinity plus infinity or minus infinity the change would be the magnitude of the change in the inputs required to maintain both y 1 and y 2 is actually blows up to infinity all right. So, if this is true then you have instability in fact it is called integral instability and why do we call it integral instability integral action causes zero offset so if you are using a pi controller in order to maintain things at set point to get zero offset then integral action is in there and if integral action is in there and you are trying to control uh, to maintain the process outputs at set point and if this condition is satisfied you get instability more specifically integral instability integral indicating that we are trying to maintain both y 1 and y 2 at set point all right. So, what that means is if 1 minus k 1 2 k 2 1 divided by k 1 1 
k 2 2 is less than 0, this implies integral instability. And what that means is, if I solve this further k 1 1 k 2 2 minus k 1 2 k 2 1 divided by k 1 1 k 2 2 is less than 0 implies guaranteed integral instability. Yeah. Now, if you look at the input output relationship, what I had was I was trying to do y 1, y 2 and y 1 is being controlled using u 1. So, this is actually k 1 1, k 1 2, k 2 1, k 2 2 into u 1, u 2. Yeah. So, if you look at this metric, what is it? It is actually the determinant of the gain matrix, the steady state gain, steady state open loop gain matrix divided by the diagonal terms. Yeah. So, we define Niederlinsky index as equal to determinant of the gain matrix for the pairing that you are recommending or that you are testing it for, for the pairing being tested divided by the product of diagonal terms. This is called the Niederlinsky index and if this Niederlinsky index is less than 0, then you have guaranteed integral instability. What that means is that the interaction terms are so bad that if you try and control y 1 at set point and y 2 at set point, if you try to control the outputs at set point guaranteed things will blow up. Okay. Continuing with this 2 by 2 system, let us say right now I got the Niederlinsky index for the pairing y 1 u 1, y 2 u 2 and the Niederlinsky index was k 1 1 k 2 2 minus k 1 2 k 2 1 divided by k 1 1 k 2 2. Let us say I do a different pairing. Let us say I say y 1 is paired with u 2 and y 2 is paired with u 1. This is the other pairing. In this case, what you will have is you still write the same thing. However, now what I am doing is y 1 is being controlled using u 2. So, what I will do is y 1 is being paired with u 2 and u 1 is controlling is trying to maintain y 1. So, in this case what I will get is this guy would be k on 1 of 2, k on 1 of 1, k on 2 of 2 and k on 2 of 1. Do you see that the gain matrix earlier for y 1 1, y 1 u 1, y 2 u 2 pairing was, do you see that the columns have been shifted, I have just interchanged the columns. Yeah. So, interchanging of the columns of the gain matrix corresponds to flipping the pairing and for this guy the Niederlinsky, for this pairing the Niederlinsky index would be determinant and the determinant is actually k 1 2 times k 2 1 minus k 2 2 by k 1 1 depend divided by k 1 1 k 2 2 no no divided by diagonal terms. So, k 1 2 k 2 1. Do you see that the sign of the determinant has changed and therefore, usually for 2 by 2 system one of the pairings would give you a positive Niederlinsky index, the other pairing is likely to give you a 
negative Niederlinsky index and what that means is one of the pairings is integrally is can be integrally stable the other pairing is guaranteed to be integrally unstable and uh, so what am I trying to say uh, what I am trying to say is if you have a pairing question and you want to use Niederlinsky index to figure out which pairings give you very severe interaction then what you do is tabulate all possible pairings. all possible pairings calculate Niederlinsky index for them for each n i less than 0 these are bad pairings n i Niederlinsky index close to 0, but greater than 0 approximately equal to but greater than 0 these are this cannot be used these are poor pairings and Niederlinsky index close to 1 these imply mild interaction mild interaction these are the pairings which neither with where the Niederlinsky index is close to 1 that means, yeah, if you look at the Niederlinsky index and if the Niederlinsky index is exactly 1, what that means is numerator is equal to denominator, then you will get cancellation and you will get 1. What that means is, if numerator is equal to denominator, denominator is k 1 1 k 2 2, numerator is k 1 1 k 2 2 minus the product of the off diagonal terms. What that means is, the product of the off diagonal terms is 0, that means at least one of the interaction terms either k 1 2 or k 2 1 is 0 at least one or both what that means is at least from the steady state perspective there is you know the additional feedback path introduced due to multivariable action multivariable interaction is broken because one of the off diagonal terms is zero yeah so Niederlinsky index close to one those pairings are worthy of further consideration Niederlinsky index pairings that give Niederlinsky index less than 0 are guaranteed to be unstable. So, those pairings you do not need to think about at all. Okay. Now, one thing that I want to point out is Niederlinsky index is a you know necessary, but not sufficient condition for, st for stability in the sense that if Niederlinsky index is less than 0, you get guaranteed instability. If Niederlinsky index for a pairing is greater than 0, well there is no guarantees and I mean this you know I mean if you, even if even if you have a single input single output system you can always screw up the tuning so that the closed loop system is unstable. So, Niederlinsky index is essentially a necessary but not sufficient condition for integral stability uh, in while well integral stability. So, what we are saying is that if Niederlinsky index is less than 0 guaranteed instability if it is greater than 0 well you may still get instability depending on how how you tune your controllers. Okay. So, that is that I think it is a good time to end thank you very much.